Hey Yaki Gang, Yaktori Guy here. In our previous lessons, you guys learned how to break down a whole chicken and to make Yaktori using the chicken thighs and chicken drumsticks. Now, if you have not watched those videos yet, I highly recommend for you to go back and watch them because they cover basic techniques which we're going to be using in our lessons today. So last time we focused on the muscle group around the leg area, so the thighs and drumstick. Now we're going to be focusing on the muscle group around the breasts and the wings and the tenders. And that's because when you break down a whole chicken and you're trying to get the breasts, the wing is attached to the breast. Underneath the breast, we have the chicken tenders. And there's also the, the back shoulder muscles, which is called furisode. All of this is the same muscle group to help the chicken flap its wings. So for today's lessons, we're going to be covering how to make skewers from all these parts right here. So with all skewering, we're gonna need our basic equipment. We have a large cutting board. I always recommend a large size plastic so you have room to work on, you can wash it easily. We're gonna need our knife right here. I'm gonna be using my garaski, my chicken cutting knife. However, at home, if you guys, as long as you guys have a sharp kitchen knife, you'll be able to do all the cuts we're doing today. To make yakitori, we're gonna need some skewers. So right here, we have our six inch skewers. I have round skewers right here, as well as these paddle skewers. Either of these will work for today's lesson. I just recommend if you can purchase skewers, get these six inch ones. That way, your size will stay consistent with what I'm showing you guys today. I have a new ingredient today. This is kombu, so this Japanese kelp. It's the essence of Japanese cooking. It's the umami that's in a lot of Japanese cooking. So I have kombu in water. So this is kombu dashi. And in here, I'll be putting in some chicken tenders, marinating the chicken tenders overnight. I also have a towel in hand. It's always just nice to keep your hands dry as you're working around chicken. And lastly, I always have this stock pot next to me. That way, any of the bones, the cartilage, tendons, Instead of throwing them away, I put them to the stock pot. With yakitori, nothing goes away. So they're either gonna become meatball skewers at the end or they become soup at the end. So we have all we need to start skewering. So let's get to skewering. Okay, so let's go over what we have here. Basically, we have the chicken wing that's attached to the breast. It's just all part of the same muscle group. Now right here, there's also the furi soda. So in our chicken breakdown video, I had you guys basically cut this chicken breast right here straight. And on the later part of the video, we slid across the shoulder blade and was able to get this off. But there is another method where when you're carving this chicken breast, if you go around it, you can get this out. But it's definitely a little bit trickier. So I left that out of that previous video. But in this case, I attached it together so you guys can see essentially how this is the breast right here and it's connected, the shoulders are here, and this cavity is normally where the chicken tender is located. So this is all part of the same muscle group, basically the pec muscle. I guess this is the, the pec minor and this would be the pec major, but all of this is interconnected muscle group to help the chicken flap its wing. I wanted to just show you guys a few other things that I've noticed over time. For example, you're gonna see this string right here coming out of the chicken breast. And this actually attaches, it's part of the chest muscle and it helps like, it helps with the flapping part of the, the moving. I freaked out the first time I, I saw this. I thought it was a worm, but if you ever see this string, definitely not a worm. If you look at all the chicken breasts, it's gonna have the string, so don't freak out. But, all right, so if we're ready, we're gonna start cutting this. So as we break down the whole chicken, we're using this, the wing, to essentially pull it apart from the chicken body. Now, once it's off, we can cut this right off. So how we're gonna cut it, basically, we wanna separate the breast from the wing. And this is that furi So let's just cut right through. So we got the wing off. This is the furi right here. The reason why it's called furi it's actually uh, Japanese kimonos. They have essentially this sort of wingy, flappy area underneath the arm of the kimono, and this sort of represents that. So this is the, the shoulder area here. So it's this own loin. We have the breast. So for the purpose of separating, 
We're going to cut this off as well. So this is the free solid. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with, put this breast away. Uh, here's another, I have another chicken wing and breast. So just right here, we're going to be cutting this right through right here. So we got the furisode, oops, furisode in the wings and the breasts. So for this first part of the lesson, let's focus on the chicken tenders. So right here I have the chicken tenders right here. Pulled these from two different chickens. And one thing that I wanted to show you guys, remind you guys, uh, when we took out the chicken tenders, we use this hard tendon to essentially pull it apart from the body of the chicken. So this is really hard to chew and we're gonna have to remove this because the key point in yakitori is we want to make sure that when the guest is having that first bite, it's gonna be nice and tender, nice and soft. We don't want them to bite into this chicken tender, which is supposed to be soft, but then their teeth get stuck in this hard, sort of plasticky string right here. So we're gonna have to remove this. And so the main method to removing this, and I've already removed it from this end. So we're gonna try to get that with this. So this tendon actually goes all the way down. And in order for us to remove it, we're gonna use the tip of the knife and just carve right along the white line. And you can sort of see it and feel it as you go down. But you want to be careful you don't cut through the top. So I, I just cut, I sliced across one way and then uh, with the other side. So I sliced this side already. Now I want to slice this side of this white line. So use a tip of the knife and just get as close to that white line as possible and slice all the way down. So we didn't cut all the way through yet. We just added this slice. And then, so right here, my hands are a little bit wet. Let me dry it out. So I'm gonna grab this white part and put my knife in here. Essentially, we're gonna be carving it and pulling the string at the same time. So this is why having dry hand is important because this might slip. So right here, we remove this, the chicken, the hard part. Basically it feels it was very plasticky, so we removed that. So there, we, we're done with that one. Same thing with this one. So you see where that white line is? I'm gonna cut through, just straight down that white line on one end, and then cut through the other, on the other end, down. My hands are oily again, so wiping it, and then put that knife down here, tip, and then should be able to pull it. So we're essentially sliding the knife across and then pulling it. So underneath it's kind of looking like this. So we're pulling this and sliding the knife across at the same time. Now, if that's a little bit tricky, you can also, the other method is essentially just slicing through, cutting the same cut we did, but then you just kind of flipped over with the white side up, you just start trimming it off. And it won't be as clean as sliding it across, but at least that's one other way, maybe an easier way to remove these, the hard tendons. So this, we're gonna discard into the soup pile. Okay. Now for the chicken tenders. So I have four tenders here. Actually, I'm gonna end up putting these two tenders in my kombu dashi water so it can marinate overnight. The kombu is just gonna bring out the umami in the chicken tender. So this is something that I picked up at a Yakitori Moe West in Tokyo where I was working at. I was able to sort of see what the master Daisuke-san was doing there. And he, did, he changes things up all the time, but one of the things he was doing to the chicken tenders was marinating dashi. So I normally don't do that for a lot of my dishes. I cut it and serve it that day straight up. But in this case, I had some extra tenders, so I'm gonna be marinated. So if you guys are 
cutting a lot of tenders and have some extra tenders and might be doing yak 32 days in a row definitely try putting into the dashi and and see you know do a comparison between the one with dashi with the kombu dashi marinade versus just straight up so right here so we have the chicken tenders i'm going to be cutting them i'm going to be cutting them into fourths about the top one about an inch second one about an inch and then as we go more towards the bottom the tail end of the tenders i'm going to go a little bit shorter than an inch and that way i'll show you in a bit but what we're going to get is sort of bigger on the top and then the skewer is going to get uh, narrower as we go to the bottom so for this one i'm using these round skewers so i have this end i'm going to go at this actually i'm going to show you something easier if we remove this tail it might be easier for you guys so right here this is actually one of the first skewers that i teach in my classes that i do because the chicken tenders definitely along with vegetables are really easy to handle so right here if you can see i put the lower the tail end and it goes up and it's going to get bigger in size and now some shops they will skewer this straight through I like to roll it so it's kind of like a dome shape and then skewer it through and, and to roll it, let's say if this is flat, I'm using the friction of this cutting board and using my two, my left hand to grab it and using the friction I can roll it in one motion as I skewer. So let me show you that again. So if this is flat, I can use the friction of the cutting board, bring it in and then skewer in the middle. So it's kind of like shooting pull. So using the friction, the cutting board, that, and then one more. And that way I have these nice rounded folds on the top. Messy on the bottom, but this is what people are gonna see when they eat, so it just looks very nice. So here, I'm not gonna cut the tail off. I wanted to show you what I normally do if I don't cut the tail off. I basically curve this, I kinda call it a shrimp shape, but I'm gonna just poke it at one end and curve it so it's a C, basically uh, like a little shrimp. And then same thing with the other ones. Basically use the cutting board friction and push it in. Cutting board and uh, last top piece. So as you can kind of see, there's a certain structure to this yakitori where it's sort of smaller on the bottom and it kind of gets bigger. And the reason for doing that is when I'm using my grill, especially the electric grill, it's gonna be a little bit hotter towards the top. That's where the coils are, a little bit cooler on the bottom. So the bottom doesn't cook as well, so it's nice to have smaller pieces on the bottom and bigger on the top. So right here we have the chicken tenders that are done. All right, now we're gonna do the chicken breasts. Now, if you ever see these stringy stuff, kind of showed it to you guys earlier, but both of these chicken breasts has it. So not worms, it's just part of the chicken breast. It's attached to basically, I think it's like a stringy part, like a, almost like a spring helps the wing flat. So that's totally normal. So chicken breast compared to let's say thigh meat, definitely it's white meat, so it's gonna seem a little bit dry. So when cooking yakitori for me, my thought process is what can I do to make sure that the chicken breast is gonna still be juicy and one way I came up with is if I put fat, which I collected from the chicken, especially like the butt stomach area, this fat, if I put it in between the meat, that's probably gonna help it get juicy. So I started doing that and it, it worked. So I wanted to show you that skewer. So with the chicken breast, you're gonna definitely see that there's this end, which is a little bit thicker, and this end, it's a little bit thinner. So I'm gonna cut this part right here and get this strip and then from this strip if I cut and cut about three cubes lay it out the way I want it to lay it out and these fats and I cut about say a one centimeter by one centimeter cube Okay, so we have these cubes of fat 
I'm gonna take this chicken breast. I'm gonna curl it, dome shape it, just like we did the chicken, the chicken tenders. Okay, and then we're gonna put this fat through. And put the second breast in. Grab a piece of this fat, skewer it through. And skewer the top. So what we have here is essentially chicken breast, fat, chicken breast, fat, chicken breast. It's gonna be very juicy as it cooks. So with this thicker part, we can still get that same cut. However, you might have to trim it a bit. So we're gonna do that right here, just to flatten it a little bit. And then I'll be able to cut it into threes. Put this in a soup stock, lay it out again. Use this fat, cut a small sliver. Okay, poke through the breasts, poke through fat, poke through breasts, poke through some fat and at the top of the breasts. So we have something like this. So we have the chicken tenders and the breasts with the fat. Now, it's always about how do we make the chicken, the breasts, which can be dry, how do we make it still taste good? So one way that I've also learned, this is uh, Chef Kono in New York. He taught me about rolling these chicken, making them very thin, slicing them thin and rolling it. So we're gonna try that method. The top of the, the chicken breasts are here where the wings connected. It's gonna be definitely a little bit harder so we can slice that off. And for the rest of this part though, we thinly carving it. This is probably better with more of a sashimi style knife or just even your kitchen knife. A long knife would be good, but I'm just gonna use this knife for now. I don't wanna wash extra knives if I don't have to. Okay, so let's got some slivers right here. Let's see, just need about one, two, three, four, five. I think six pieces will do. Okay, so we'll put this away. Now, we're gonna grab our skewer. And ideally, you wanna flatten these out a little bit, make them nice and long. Then, we're gonna use the skewer to roll it underneath roll it over, roll it underneath, roll it over, roll it underneath and roll it over. And we have something like this. Roll it underneath, poke through, roll it underneath, poke through, a little underneath, poke through. It's gonna be, he's rolled chicken. So this is two separate ways that we do essentially, so we don't need this anymore. So we have right here, let's see if we can focus. Oh, no, here we go. So we have breasts with the fat and then breasts with basically the rolled method. So two different ways of preparing the breasts, that way it's just gonna stay nice and tender. Two different sort of philosophies of making it nice and tender. Okay, so put these here. Then next up, we have the chicken wings. So the wings here, this still has that the foodie sold it right here. This is the, the shoulder area, foodie sold it. Slice that off, put that aside. Now the wing right here, this is the drumette. And this is basically the, the center of the wing. 
the wing tip. So this is Tebamoto Tebasaki right here. Now, some shops, they're going to fillet this out and I'm going to show you that method, but I wanted to show you the way I skewer these. And the reason why I do this is while all these other skewers are very bite sized, I serve my chicken wings at the very end and I want people to basically work into it. So I serve it whole. And the reason why I do that is it maintains all the juices inside because the skin is essentially acting as a cover and the meat inside just steams inside. So basically I'm going to skewer uh, just chicken wing whole. Now to skewer it, I'm going to be centering it so that it doesn't flop around. And then I'm also making sure that it's going to be in this exact center between the meat and the bone. So as I poke it, it's going to go in essentially so if you're looking at from the bottom, it's going to be skin, meat, skewer, bone, meat, and skin. So it's going to be on both ends. So something like this. So this is sort of my, let's see if we can focus. So this is sort of my way that I serve chicken wings. However, I wanted to show you guys other methods, other ways of doing the chicken wings. All right. So with the chicken wings, we can separate them out. And the reason why a lot of shops would do this, it's gonna cook quicker. The other whole method, it takes a while for all of this to cook through, but if you fillet this out, debone it, essentially it's gonna cook. So the way we wanna debone this, essentially we're looking at where the, the joint is right here. So the drum at the wing, if you, if you cut it right through, you're gonna see exactly where kind of, and you might be able to snap it, but it's basically right here. You can use the, the knife and just cut right through. And then same thing with right here. There's where the joint ends. You should be able to just cut it right through. So this is we have the wing tip and the, the drumette right here. So let's go ahead and do that to these ones as well. Oops. Okay, so we got these. I'm gonna put these wing tips. Can't really eat too much of this, so put this in the soup stock. And the drumettes, we'll leave it right here. Now, to fillet up these wings, I wanna say the easiest method to do it is just cut straight in the middle. But if you wanna be a little bit more, you know, advanced and really fillet this out, you're gonna look for, there's a bigger bone and then a smaller bone. So I'm gonna use the tip of the knife and then Basically cut into the smaller bone area. Just carve across the smaller bone area. And then I should now be able to open that up. So, and then carve the other side of this, basically the smaller bone, and that's gonna really fillet it out. Now take my knife underneath, and then carve along the bigger bone, underneath of the bigger bone. So it's gonna, Let's see if I see, but basically we got the big bone and the small bone right here. So cut that out. Same thing on this end. Starting from the tip of that, the where the bone ends, the other side where the bone ends, just slide across and then cut across the bone. So really spread that out. Use that tip to really spread it out. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. Now to skewer this, you're going to take your skewer, go through the meat, and then go essentially underneath the bone. The skewer, so basically skin, meat, skewer underneath the bone. I'm going to come out the other end, make sure it's centered, and do it the same on the other end. Skewer through underneath the bone, skewer through the meat underneath the bone. Then you're gonna get something like this. And if you wanna spread it out, that way it'll, it'll cook definitely flatter. So there's wing right there. Let's go ahead and for the purpose of this, just show you another wing right here. Okay. Actually, I don't have any more wings, so this would be the only thing that I can show you guys. So basically the wings spread out in the whole wing. Now we have a drumette here. Now the drumette, similar to when we did the drumsticks on the legs, 
we just want to get off as much meat off the bone as possible so just carve along the bone of the of this drumette get that meat off okay use that tip of the knife to get in there just carve it right off the bone we can throw into the soup so we have some meat from the drumette here same thing here it's gonna carve it across it's always good if you flatten it on the cutting board then you won't be able to you'll be able to get more of that meat off okay so we got some chunk into the soup so if you guys recall we have the furi sode the shoulder meat so you can attach it onto the breasts or you can also cut it right off like i showed you guys in the chicken cutting video so if we have these extra shoulder meats right here then we can definitely combine it with the the drumette pieces so let's maybe do a combination of we'll put drumette and then shoulder this is with the skin on the skin may not be on when uh, you have it but yeah we have some drumette shoulder drumette and then shoulder it's gonna sort of roll it around so here we go so this is a combination of drumette and shoulders so we have a few extra meats here we have some drumette piece some shoulder i have another shoulder in here which i do so it's a little bit bigger Drumette, shoulder, drumette. So the, the drumette and the shoulder, very similar sort of in textures, I would say. And notice that this one is a little bit bigger, so I might just sort of trim these just so they cook a little bit evenly. But yeah, making sure that they're about the same width is that was nice. And these extra parts definitely will be good in squid. All right guys, so we just finished skewering and I think this is a good example of, there's just so many different ways to approach even the same cut of chicken meat. So for the tenders, they're nice and tender. It's really great to cook right away. However, if you marinate it, it comes even softer and even deeper flavors. The chicken breast, a little bit dry but how do we make it so the chicken breast is still going to be enjoyable so for my way i'm putting the chicken fats in between and chef kono he does a roll-up way so even the same chicken breast can be approached two different ways for the chicken wings we have my way where i like to serve it whole that way the meat the it gets nice and steamed inside of crispy uh, the skin and you have to essentially work at it just like how you eat buffalo wings, hot wings, you have to get into it and work at it. Whereas some of the shops, they're gonna debone it for you. It cooks faster, it becomes crispier, gets smokier, and you know you can just bite it right off the skewer. So just different sort of approaches, as well as what do you do if, when there's not enough pieces? So like the drumette, there's not enough meat, there's not enough shoulder meat. You can always combine and make your own skewer. So as same with the thigh and the drumsticks from last week, I think this is a really good example of with yakitori, the cuisine of yakitori is it's basically a, a blank canvas. You take this chicken and you can make however way you think is going to taste better. It's going to have a better texture or a better experience for your guests and it's a way for you to express yourself. So this is just a few examples of what you're able to do if let's say the breasts or the wings or the tenders or the drumettes. But hopefully you guys can take this lesson, make these skewers, or make your own. And I would love to see how you guys develop and grow with your own yakitori. So once again, thanks for watching so far. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you'll be able to see all the following lessons that are I still have planned for you guys. We still have more uh, skin, we have some innards, and we have other special skewers that I would definitely love to show you guys as well as going over some of the equipment that we've been using. And 
Once again, I'm also very happy to answer any of your questions you guys have. So make sure to comment below or follow me, Yakturi Guy, on Instagram. Just DM me with any questions. As long as I'm around, I'm happy to answer them. And always love seeing your guys' creation and your guys' growth in this progress. So let me know. I'm always here for you guys. And hopefully, yeah, you guys had fun with today's lesson. So I'll catch you guys next week. Thanks again for watching. All right. Bye, guys.